Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. Today we're going to be talking about what takes place as soon as you get to heaven. Some of you are going to be going to heaven before others. Many of us have family members who are already there. When Jesus returns, some of us will be alive, some of us will not. But we're going to enter into a place called paradise, the bosom of Abraham. We're going to talk today for just a little bit about what happens when you get there. But before that, let's put up a scripture on the, on the screen. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. For our citizenship is in heaven. You see that? Your citizenship is not in the United States of America. For people who are watching overseas, your citizenship is not in your home country if you're a born-again believer. Your citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior. Now, your citizenship is not in heaven when you get there. Your citizenship in heaven is now. And we are eagerly waiting for the Savior. Waiting for what? We're waiting for Him to come and get us. See, so much of the church is concerned with what's going on now, and then a lot of the church is concerned on what's going to be going on in heaven, but we need to understand this. There should be an anticipation that Jesus could come back at any moment for the church. We are to, what does it say here? Eagerly wait for the Savior. Not just ho-hum wait. Eagerly wait for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to what will happen when He comes back. Who will transform our lowly body. Would you like to have your lowly body transformed? Who will transform our lowly body that it may be what? Conformed to what? His glorious body Jesus has his glorified body you don't yet trust me I can see you do not have your glorified body yet but you will have a glorified body that will be like his glorified body and we should eagerly be waiting for him to show up and so we can get our glorified body because the reality is our citizenship is not here our citizenship is heaven. I said our citizenship is heaven. Our citizenship is not United States. Now, there is a time coming on this earth called the tribulation period. And unlike what you've heard taught many, many times, if you're a born-again believer, you're not going to be here during the tribulation period. When the rapture takes place, the church is going to be caught up and going to be gone. The only ones that will be left is unbelievers. In fact, I've taken measures to make sure that the church will go on after the rapture. I've asked Jerry if the rapture takes place this week, if he would fill in next Sunday. <laughs> ah, that's not true. That's not true. Okay. But we have this time period on earth called the tribulation period. It is a seven-year period period divided into two times of three and a half years but overall it's a seven year period and this is when the antichrist attempts to take over and rule the earth it is nothing this last week we had holocaust remembrance week which by the way did you know that barna research did a survey just a few weeks ago and they found out that two out of every six millennials had never heard of the Holocaust. One out of every ten adults over 35 didn't know what it was. But as bad as the Holocaust was, six million Jews slaughtered as they went into the gas chambers. They looked in their mouth if they had any gold in their, in their teeth. They just popped those teeth off and put them in a pile. I've seen piles of teeth. took their clothes, took everything that they had, stripped them naked, walked them into gas chambers. Then they 
burned their bodies in crematories. I mean, it was, the Holocaust, you can't even imagine. If you've, if you've never been through Yad Vashem, well, we've been through Yad Vashem in Israel several times, but uh, that's a m memorial for the Holocaust. They have one in Washington, D.C., and uh, it's not quite as good, I don't think, but it's, it, it really shows you the horror, the horror that took place. But let me tell you something. As bad as that was, it pales in comparison to what's going to take place during the tribulation here on earth. And we just kind of set back. See, but the church, even though we're not going to be here, it's kind of like Chris said earlier, we don't want our families to go through it. Somebody may say, well, once the rapture takes place, then all those who are left, they're going to know that it was true. They're going to realize that Jesus was the way and they're going to get saved. Yeah, but they've missed the opportunity to be a part of the body of Christ. They, they may not go to hell. They may turn to Jesus and somehow survive through the tribulation period or they may turn to Jesus and be martyred during the tribulation period and either way they may not go to hell but they won't be a part of the body of Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. But now this seven year period called the tribulation period it has kind of like what we would call bookends on either end of it. Now here's the area we're living in and you come up to this first bookend it's called the rapture. And then we have the seven-year period of the tribulation and the second book in, which is called the second coming of Jesus. People may say, well, what's the difference? Well, here's the difference. And part of the reason, part of the reason that people get so confused in Scripture when it talks about the end times and they say, well, you just never know what God's going to do. It's, it's confusing to me, but I'm sure God's got it figured out. Well, He does have it figured out, and He's told us in His Word. But here's the deal. If you try to make all the scriptures that predict the rapture and all the scriptures that predict the second coming all come together and just say it's all one thing, that's where the confusion comes in because they're not the same thing. Now, there's a lot of things that's going to have to happen prophetically before Jesus comes back at the second coming and touches down on earth. The Bible says when he comes back at the second coming that he will touch down on earth at the Mount of Olives. And there's going to be earthquakes and various things happen. And he's going to set up his kingdom for a thousand years. But at the beginning of the seven-year period, he's going to appear in the sky. And we're going to be caught up to be with him. So you can see how there are things that have to happen before the second coming. But you know, every single scripture that says what's going to happen before the rapture has already been fulfilled. There are. There's not one prophecy about what needs to be done before Jesus appears in the sky that hasn't been fulfilled. What's that mean? That means any moment. That means the, the next voice you hear could be the shout of God. And, and we're, we're caught up. As Chris said, are you ready? Are your friends ready? Well, we need to understand this, that we are going to go to heaven, but the process for us who are here today, who are born-again believers, the process for us is we're basically going to get there uh, one of two ways. Our bodies are either going to be dead in the ground because they've quit working and our spirits are with the Lord already, and when the Lord comes back, our bodies are caught up out of the ground and our spirits go back into our bodies, or you're alive when Jesus returns, and right after the dead are resurrected, then we are caught up to be with him in the air. Either way, once we're caught up and we're in the air, the Bible says in, the, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be changed, and we'll become as he is. Mortality will drop off. We'll take on immortality. Corruption will drop off. We'll take on incorruption. And we will be as he is. Look at this. Here's the scripture in Philippians. Most people don't see this. But it's, it says we'll be transformed. Our lowly bodies will be transformed that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. The reality is Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, you're either going to be caught up 
dead body or a live body, you're going to be caught up. If, now, once again, let me be clear on this. If your body is dead, it's only your body that's caught up because you are already with the Lord. And when Jesus comes back, He's bringing back with Him all of those whose bodies have died who are Christians. And when their bodies are caught up, their spirits come back to their bodies. We are caught up in our bodies. And at a moment, we are all changed. And we become as He is. We have our glorified bodies. And what do we do then? That's when we go back to heaven with Him. And I'm, I've read this to you many, many times, but I'm going to read you this Scripture again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. When it says brethren, that's talking to the church. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. That means that their bodies have died. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Who, is, who are those others who have no hope? That's the ones who don't believe in Jesus. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and the way that's written in the Greek language there is, it means, of course, we believe that. Even so, God will bring with Him. God will bring with who? God is going to send with Him Jesus. When Jesus returns, He's going to send with Him those who sleep. In Jesus that means those whose bodies have died verse 15 for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep simply put that is saying the ones who are asleep uh, in Jesus in other words their bodies have died but they're with him in the paradise of God we are not going to be caught up before them. Verse 16, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. Now, as it shows in the movies, you see this all the time in the movies, all of a sudden somebody just disappears and everybody wonders why. You know, their clothes fall off, the rings fall down on the floor, silicone bounces around. Everything, they, they, they go, they go, and everything earthly stays here. Are you following me? Okay. And, and people are just going, wow. What happened? Let me tell you something. This is not going to be a secret event. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like, this happened. What happened? Well, it says here, for the Lord himself, this is like Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout. Can't you hear it now? Whoopee! No. It's not going to be that kind of a shout. If the Lord Himself, the One who created the universe, it says all things were made by Him and for Him in John 1.1. 1, 1. Everything was made by Him. The Word of God created the universe. The universe right now is, the known universe is 91 billion light years across. That's That's big. And the one who spoke that into existence, all of the hundreds of billions of galaxies with each having hundreds of billions of stars, he's not going to descend from heaven and say, whoopee. If he descends from heaven with a shout, the earth is going to tremble. And everybody's going to know it. They're not going to say, well, I think I heard thunder in the distance. <laughs> now I'm telling you, I know that the movies make it kind of like, psh, they're gone. No, I mean, his voice, do you know what sound does? Sound can shatter a glass. I mean, the, the, the right pitch of sound can shatter. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of a cherub. Oh, no, 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 no. With the voice of an archangel. This is a big deal. With the trumpet of God. Jim? Trumpet player. 
This is going to be a trumpet like nobody has ever heard. It's going to be a shofar. As you know, it actually says it's going to be with the shofar of God. Wow. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, oh, I love it when it says then. I've often wondered, why does it say the dead in Christ rise first and then we who are alive are caught up? Because in the movies, it just all happens at once. Dead oh, Graves open up and everybody who's alive, they're all caught up in the air. They're all gone. But the Bible says, did you know it's better to get your, your theology out of the Bible? Now, I will say this about the movie that, that Chris distributes. That's one of the most accurate movies I've ever seen. And I'm glad that that's the movie that you're taking. Because it doesn't have all the Hollywood theatrics in it. It's got the Word in it. But the Bible says those who are dead will rise first. Then we who are alive. Implication is there's some time involved there. It's not like, it's like, why, why would we be told? It's, once again, it's so that you don't freak out. Now the run for the sun people, they don't freak out at anything. you know. But the rest of us who don't have Harleys, uh, you need to know that when you see the graves open, when you see the dead in Christ rise, when you see these bodies coming out of the ground and they're, they're being caught up in the air and, and maybe somebody was even cremated and all their DNA numbers called out and they're all back together and they're, they're moving up into the air. All you need to know is this if you're a born-again believer. Next! Then we who are alive will be caught up together with them. Wow. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. When somebody says to you, well, I don't know where I'm going to be in a million years. Well, here's the deal. All you got to do is go to the Bible and find out where Jesus is going to be. And where he's going to be is that's, that's where you are. Because the scripture says you'll always be with the Lord. Now, for 51 years, I've always been with Loretta. Now, that didn't mean that she couldn't, from time to time, go someplace. Now, I've mentioned it several times, but she has a friend in Australia. She went over for I don't know how many months, or long, just one month. It was Sherry that went for several. Okay, she went over to visit her friend for a month. Here's the deal. We were still together. Even though she was thousands of miles away, we were still together. This doesn't mean that you're going to be tethered to Jesus. But you're going to be in close proximity. And you're going to be in relationship from this point on, from the point of the rapture on. Now there are people who say, well, the word rapture is not even in the Bible. Well, neither is the word computer or automobile. So, or or iWatch. So everybody's got an iWatch, throw it away because it's not in the Bible. It, it's not real, you know. Uh, the word dollar is not in the Bible either, so turn all those in. We'll take care of it. Okay. You need to understand something. Just because a word is not in the Bible doesn't mean that the concept's not there. The word Trinity, for goodness sakes, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. But we believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, don't we? Okay. Um, the word rapture is from the Vulgate Greek translation. Harpazo is in the Greek, which is transferred into Latin as repero, which is transferred into English as rapture. If it was translated properly, it means caught up or snatched away. And that is the word that is used when it says, then we who are alive shall be caught up Arpazo, reparo, raptured, caught up. Are you following? Okay. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 4, 14. Knowing that He who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Wow, is this good? All right. Now, let's take a look at another scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is one people don't look at too often, but we're going to look at it. 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 42, it says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. What do you do with a seed? A dead seed. You put it in the ground. You sow it. All right. That's what happens to our bodies. They're put into the ground. They're sown into the ground dead. But they're raised alive. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. Verse 45. And so it is written, the first Adam became a living being, the second Adam became a life-giving spirit. That life-giving spirit, Jesus gave us the ability to be life-giving spirits. Look at verse um, 46, 46. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of the dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Verse 48. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, look at this, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. That's another way of saying in a long way we're going to be like Him. Isn't that good? Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, I, I, every time I see this Scripture, I can't help but think of the nursery. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. I think they should put this sign up over in the, in the toddler's room. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Yeah, okay. Um, but the reality is this. We shall not all sleep. Remember, those who sleep in Jesus, we're not all going to be dead. Not all of us, our bodies are going to die. But here's one thing we have in common, whether your body dies or not, we'll all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Now, oh, this is good. Well, let's just take a look at this. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now is that good? Now I'll tell you something, death hasn't been swallowed up in victory yet. But the process has been put in place and the price has been paid and it will happen. Hmm. Romans 8.23 Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting the adoption, the redemption of our body. When does the redemption of your body take place? Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says we are a three-part being. We are spirit, soul, and body. When you became a Christian, your spirit was redeemed. But look, around, look at your hands. Your body has not been redeemed. Can you agree? You still have the same features that you had before you got saved. I mean, if, if, you, if you got saved, if you were a model and you got saved after you got saved, you still look like a model. If you are the ugliest scuzzball on the face of the earth and you get saved, you're still ugly. <laughs> and I say that in love, but that's your body. That's because your body hasn't been redeemed yet. 
But when Jesus comes, when you hear the trumpet, when you hear the toot and we shoot, let me tell you something, your body is going to change and you're going to be like He is. And you're going to have a glorified body. And let me tell you something, there are no glorified bodies that aren't way cool. Okay? Wow. I love it. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Let's look at that one one more time. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's talking about the rate you're changed, not the rate of speed you're caught up into the air at the rapture. You're changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. How are you going to be caught up? Well, let me tell you what. The two angels standing by when Jesus arose, when He ascended, they said, in the same way He's going up now, that's the way He's coming back. And if He's our example, He wasn't talking to the disciples, and He said, and you shall receive power when the whole... And He's gone. That's not the way it happened. He said, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And, you'll be, and He continued His conversation. And the Bible says, while He was talking, they watched Him go up did you see his feet they're not touching the ground and he went up into the clouds he's coming back in a cloud but it's going to be a cloud of witnesses wow okay uh, and that's in Acts chapter 1 did you know I have more information for you we haven't even got to heaven yet. I'm, I'm trying my best to get us to heaven. <laughs> but the process of getting there is just so much fun. Okay, I'm just going to read you a couple scriptures and then I'm going to let you go. Okay. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle. This is Hebrews 9, 11, and 12. Not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Let me tell you something. He paid the price once and for all. It's already been done. For you to be redeemed, which if you're born again, you are. And for your body to be redeemed, if you're born again, it will be. Isn't that good news? So, uh, for some people who just maybe all their life have wanted a, diff a different body, Jerry knows that he's not stuck with that body forever. There's going to be a day. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, here's something that's kind of interesting. After Jesus was resurrected, and he got his glorified body. Now, I've heard this taught, and it was taught by Charles Capps, and I don't want you to think that this is specifically what I believe, or I'm not going to say this is specifically what the Bible says, but the Bible doesn't say the opposite either. Are you following me? This is one of those think-about-it things. When Jesus was raised from the dead, He was on earth for 40 days in His glorified body before He actually ascended. There are those theologians who believe that at the rapture, when the dead in Christ rise, that the reason it tells us that they rise first is because there may be a period of time where they're here on the earth before we are caught up with them in the air. Um, in the same way that when Jesus came out of the ground, when He came out of the grave first, there were hundreds who were resurrected, maybe even thousands, the Bible says they walked around Jerusalem before they 
went to paradise. Wow. Now that's, please don't turn off the TVs at this point. But that's something to think about. Now the Bible doesn't say that's what's going to happen, but let me tell you something. The Bible doesn't say that's not going to happen. So that's one of those things, you know, maybe as we get near the time, why would the Word of God tell us that the dead in Christ are going to rise first? Then we who are alive will be caught up with it. It's because there's going to be some period of time, I mean, at least a little bit of time, but it doesn't tell us how much time. And so this is one thing for those of you who don't know me real well. Um, I like to preach and teach what the Bible actually says, but every now and then there's something that the Bible leaves open to interpretation, and that's okay. But just don't get it. Don't allow what you think might happen to override what it says will happen. What we do know is the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, at some point in time, one minute, one week, we don't know, later, we who are alive will be caught up together with Him. This much we know. We'll all be changed. We'll all have our glorified bodies, and we're all moving on to the place where our citizenship is. Because where's our citizenship? In heaven. All right. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to quit there. I would, and I'm going to continue this next Sunday. All right? This next Sunday, my next heading is called Moving on to Heaven, which is where I kind of intended to be today. Because when we get to heaven, remember I told you there's a seven year period, two bookends, we have the rapture. And then at the end of the seven years, we have the second coming. During that seven-year period, on earth, on earth, all of those who are not caught up in the rapture are going to be going through the tribulation period. But we are in the paradise of God. We are in heaven. And here's the interesting thing. The Bible clearly tells us what we're going to be doing during that seven years. And you're going to have your glorified body so you're not going to be affected by gravity and oxygen and all of that kind of stuff. You're going to have your glorified body. You're going to be just like Jesus. And you're going to be with Jesus. And we're going to be in the paradise of God. We're going to be in heaven. And He's going to prepare us. We're going to talk about how that happens in the Bible. Once again, the Bible clearly tells us exactly what's going to happen. And then at the end of the seven years, we're going to come back with him. There doesn't need to be a resurrection of the church. The church has already been resurrected. The church already has its glorified bodies. The church is with Jesus. And when Jesus comes back at the second coming, and this is something that's rarely taught, when he comes back at the second coming, the church, the body of Christ in all of its glory, comes with him. And he sets up his kingdom. I mean, it's a, it's a glorious thing. And... Don't ever let anybody tell you, well, you just never know what's going to happen. Read your Bible. It tells us clearly what's going to happen. Praise God. Stand up. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word clearly gives us a detailed account of our future. We thank you, Father, that you looked down through the corridors of time and wrote down through the prophets exactly what we need to know about our future. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We love you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, amen.